treat me like a dog. That's the conversation we're going to have here today on Self Love Monday. How you guys doing? This is Ron Simplified Myers, author, podcaster, and your uplifting life partner. Now, this one actually comes into being because I was thinking about the fact, you know, because you see all the different commercials, you watch the way people treat their dogs, and, and I'm using dogs in this example, but any pet, um, because, you know, there's a lot of people that will have more concern with animals than they actually have with human beings. And again, I'm not saying good, bad, right, or wrong. I'm just saying it is what it is. I remember someone had made the conversation, uh, the comment, they were talking to this young lady one time and they asked her if your sister had, um, if there was a fire and you only could save either your niece or your dog, which would you do? Now we know the answer to that, right? Of course you go get the niece. It's not what she said. She said her sister could always have another kid. I was like, whoa, that's amazing that she couldn't see the fact that she could get another dog, but she could see the fact that her sister could actually have another child. But in her particular case, I guess she looked at the dog as being her child. And again, I'm not here to say right, wrong, good or bad. It just amazes me that people do feel that way. So, but anyway, but that wasn't the purpose in this conversation. And this is not the men are all dogs conversation. Go watch my other video where I talk about that, where I get into more details. Because I do understand what ladies are saying when they say that. But this, this particular conversation has to do with the fact that haven't you noticed that no matter what your dog does, they can even tear up a couch pull the stuffing out, and you'll be hot for a second, but you'll forgive them for it. They, they pee all over the house. They, you know, do other stuff all over the house, which we know we won't get into total detail. And guess who cleans it up? You do. Yes, you may be a little disappointed, but you forgive them. You hold them. You squeeze them tight. I mean, you love all over them. Think about it. They don't work. They're not contributing to the house financially. Matter of fact, you got to buy them food. And for those that do clothing, you got to buy them clothing or you make clothing for them. All the dog has to do, their entire existence is just show you love and they're fully taken care of. Everything they do, you may be upset for a moment, but you get over it. Now, I'm not talking about the people that abuse animals because they have different issues. I'm talking about the normal, average person when it comes to your animals. Um, but really what I want to talk about is why don't you give yourself that same kind of cushion? And that's why I'm saying treat me like a dog. I mean, because... You'll let your dog do all these things. You have to clean up after you have to do all the stuff we just said. All they have to do is show you love, but you don't give yourself any kind of forgiveness and any kind. You tear yourself down and you beat yourself up for all the things that you do because society tells you you're supposed to be a certain way. Now, I'm not going to draw on this in terms of, of relationships, but it holds true in your relationship. You will, you will miss, I mean, get rid of a partner for the littlest things. And hopefully they're contributing to the house in some form or fashion, or you got to make that decision before you got with them to begin with. Remember we talked about red flags and stuff, but the key is why can't you give them compassion and show them love when they don't do things exactly the way you want it? See, we don't look at it that way. We'll say, well, the dog doesn't know better. You're amazed at how smart animals actually are and what they do and don't know. I remember um, my sister lived with us at one time and her cat, because she had a cat, what he would do is sit at the top of the steps one day, and this is what he did, and as I came up, because what he liked to do is he'd like to jump in the shower and he likes to slap at the water as it's coming down the drapes. 
Some people go, oh, that's cute. Yeah, it's cute, except for the fact because of his claws, he's cut, cutting holes into the plastic, which ain't a good thing if you're trying to take a shower. So anyway, we're trying to break the cat up doing that. So the cat sitting at the top of the steps as I come up the steps, and the cat's looking around like this, just looking around like, oh, I don't see nothing. Nothing's going on. Everything's good. And I'm sitting here chuckling to myself because I said, I know what the cat's up to. The cat is going to wait for me to go into my bedroom, which was down the hall. And then the cat was going to jump in the shower and start playing with the water. So what I did is I walked down the hall got, and I went around the corner of my room, just, just stepped out where the cat couldn't see me because I already knew what the cat was up to. Just stepped out. Cat ran in the bathroom. Instantly, I hear the slap, so I come out, and the cat, as soon as I came out of the bedroom, the cat jumped out the shower and ran back down the steps. You think that cat didn't know what he was doing? He knew exactly what he was doing. He knew I didn't want that. Now, see, now, we would, we would, we would tear ourselves up for stuff like that, or we tear our partners down for stuff like that, for doing things that we don't agree with. And so the purpose in this conversation really is, if you could treat your dog with compassion and love and forgiveness, why can't you do that with yourself? Put yourself in the same position and forgive yourself when you do things that didn't turn out the way you wanted it or you feel like it went wrong. Or maybe you, you know, because sometimes I even do that myself. I just go, man, you didn't do enough today. And then I'm like, whoa, hold up. According to who? Why am I putting all this? Because I'm a person that's guilty of relaxing and, and, and telling myself, how dare you relax? You haven't accomplished. You haven't accomplished the things that you need to get done. Folks, understand there's always going to be things on your plate. There's always going to be things that need to get done. Even the things that are at the top of your list today, once they get done, guess what? Some new things are going to pop up on your list. That's called life. That's called living. There's always going to be stuff on the list to get done. Get over it. So in this case, the whole idea here is learn how to hug yourself. Learn how to be compassionate with yourself. Forgive yourself when you do things that, again, didn't turn out the way you wanted them. Or you feel like you just, as the world would say, you made a mistake. And for me, I don't buy into all the stuff. I just go, you got to do something. If it don't turn out the way you wanted it, you look at it and go, where can I make the adjustments? You make the adjustments and you move on. I don't get, as you guys know, I don't get caught in the labels and and you're bad and you're not perfect and you're a sinner and you, you, all these negatives that people think for some reason inspires people to be their best. Um, should I? No. Yeah. I'll cover it real quick because I was going to jump on that that conversation. I was going to do that because I've talked about it in the past about the perfect. Because, again, people like to say being perfect, and that's kind of what we do with ourselves. And, and again, I'm guilty of it. Uh, again, wanting things to be a certain way, as people will call perfect. And for me, the perfection, and that's why I'm going to talk on it, because people will talk about the human beings are, are not perfect. And I go, yes, you are. You're, you're all perfect. You have to understand when I say you're perfect is because you as an individual are not the actions that you take. But we link that as human beings like what you do is you. And they're not the same. You're perfect. You're totally equipped to handle all the things that are going to cross your path as a human being. Whether you believe it or not, you're equipped to is whether you use the equipment that has been given to you in order to adjust to the thing. And in most things, well, in all things, you know you have accomplished because you're still here. <laughs> so you've gotten through it. So we have to recognize that um, what we do is different than who we are. You're perfect. You're in a world who things are always changing. So you as a person will never line up to everything that's going on in the world because it's always changing. I use the analogy when I did the video specifically on this perfection of, of uh, weed, for example, grass or whatever you want to cut, what is it, cannabis, cannibals, cannabis, I said cannibals, <laughs> cannabis, 
<laughs> that works too. But cannabis, that that whole industry used to be illegal. Now it's legal on every corner. So how do you, as an individual, line up with a system that's always changing? That's impossible. That's why what the world, quote unquote, calls perfect is something that's different than what perfection actually is. Because to me, like when people say I'm a perfectionist, I go, no, you're not. You're an imperfectionist. And in some instances, you're a pessimist. Why do I say that? And I know some of you that, that call yourself perfectionist probably <laughs> just got upset when I said that, but don't. Um, what I'm saying is a perfectionist in my eyes is a person who looks for the perfection in everything. That's why they're perfectionists because they look for the perfection. How can you be a person that looks for something wrong in everything, always looking for what's wrong and that's called a perfectionist. No. Can you imagine being in a relationship with someone that everything you do, all they're doing is sitting back trying to figure out what you're doing wrong? It ain't long before you're not going to be in that relationship, hopefully. But that's not somebody that's a perfectionist. That's somebody that got some issues. That's a pessimist. Because that's someone, because what is a pessimist then? I mean, isn't that what pessimists do? They always try to look for the negative and everything. They always try. Why do you think a person that we consider in our society a perfectionist to be the same definition as someone who's a pessimist? It's all a pessimist does is they're always, they're always looking for the negative of everything and they're always trying to destroy everything. And they, they refuse to see the positives on anything. That's what that person does. You can't see the beauty in anything because you're always trying to find something wrong with it. That's not a perfectionist in my eyes. A perfectionist is a person that recognizes and looks for the perfections because they are a perfectionist. And, um, and they don't spend their time there because that's an imperfectionist. A person that's looking for all the things that need to be improved upon. See? Imperfection. They're looking to improve the things that's going on. But anyway, I just wanted to cover that today because I just thought that was something that's real important for us to recognize that we need to learn to treat ourselves differently, treat ourselves the way that uh, you would your animals. And I use dogs again as, as an example, but any animal that you have had or you do have, you know the leniency and the, and the forgiveness and the, and the warmth and the care that you gave them. Learn to give that same thing to yourself. And then once you give that to yourself, it becomes easy, as you guys know. That's why I always talk about get you together first. If you can do, treat yourself well, then treating someone else well becomes easier to do. Why? Because you've had practice. But if you're like most people who all you do is abuse yourself and then wonder how come your relationships don't work, it's not hard to figure out. You abuse you, so guess what you do in your relationships? The exact same thing. So anyway, learn to treat yourself like you would your dog. <laughs> and I know you guys get my point. So again, as you guys know, it ain't right, it ain't wrong. It is my opinion. Now, if, for those of you I talked to on uh, Relationship Thursday, I look forward to seeing you on Thursday. For those of you on Relationship Monday, I look forward to talking to you next Monday. And as you guys know, matter of fact, run over to ronsimplifiedmyers.online. Again, ronsimplifiedmyers.online. See all the different things that I got going on. And as you guys know, if you're not having fun, you should be doing something else. Learn to treat yourself well. Again, your dogs don't do have, have to do anything but show love. And they're treated like queens and kings. Learn to treat yourself with the same kind of, uh, the, the same kind of, what do we want to call it? The same kind of compassion. All right. And uh, again, if you're not having fun, you should be doing something else. And I'll talk to you guys later. Take care. Bye-bye.